Here's a fairly common issue that people run into, and that's when the only logo you have is one that someone sent to you, and it's on a white background, like this, and it's a JPEG. Ideally, I would have them send the original artwork, but sometimes that's all they've got. So if I drag and drop this onto my photo, now I want to remove all the white. Now sometimes if the logo is very, very dark, if not black, you can just change the blend mode to multiply. The problem is, as you can see here, it's making, while it's got rid of the white, it's making the red in this same multiply mode. So depending on where I put it, I can barely even see it because it's blending in too much with the background. So in this case, multiply blend mode wouldn't really work. I suppose I could use the magic wand and play around with the settings, but honestly, I find the simplest way when it's already on a layer by itself is just double click and open the layer style dialog box and go right here to the blend if sliders. And if I take this white triangle and just start to move it in, you can see the white is starting to disappear. And if I move it far enough, very quickly, every single piece of white has disappeared. I usually like to hold down Option or Alt and split these two triangles just to try and get a slightly softer transition. But as you can see, I'll click OK, that now the red is still completely opaque. I'm not getting any of that multiply, but the white is gone. Here's the thing though, if you look really closely, you can see that technically the white is still there. So for example, if I went to do something like add a drop shadow, and I made it bigger so you can see it. Unfortunately, as far as Photoshop's concerned, the whole white box is still there. So the fix for it, it's a little weird, but it works. I'm gonna put a layer below this one. So if I hold down Command or Control and click on the new layer button, it puts the layer below. Then I go back up to the top layer. I'm gonna merge these two layers together. The simplest way is to either use the command here, merge down, or the keyboard equivalent, Command or Control E. Now it's made that blend if function permanent. So now if I go and get my drop shadow function, you can see that now it really is a drop shadow of the entire thing. So that's kind of interesting. The only challenge sometimes becomes, what if you don't want all of the white to disappear? Because that happens automatically. So let's hide this and go get another logo. Bring that over. And you can see here, as part of the logo, there's actually a little white line. Now, I don't want that to be see-through. And here's the way the blend if sliders work. They're global, so it's going to say take every light pixel and make it disappear. So if I do the same thing, move the slider, and then do that option or alt split the triangle thing, I'm getting the look that I want. Unfortunately, the problem is that that little light line that I want to stay white has also become see-through. And I don't want that. I want this to be still white. Well, unfortunately, like I said, blend if sliders are global, so the whole thing gets adjusted. So the simple fix for this would be to kind of combine two layers together. So I'm going to duplicate this layer, Command or Control J, temporarily hide this one so we can see what we're doing, and then I'm going to go back to the blend if slider, because I hadn't done that merge down yet, and basically take it off. Put it back to normal so I'm seeing the white. Now, I'll take a tool like my Quick Selection tool and just drag right around the outside of this. And I get all of this. And basically, all I want to do is erase, hit delete, all of that information. So now you can see I'm left with the shield and the white, but I also deleted the text. That's why I wouldn't have done it this way to begin with. Now, when I turn this other layer back on, I've got the combination that I want. And sometimes, say it was just a white circle in the middle, you could just duplicate that one little portion. You don't have to do the whole thing. In this case, I kind of had to to make life easier. So now, I want to make this permanent like I did before. Once again, Command or Control, add a new layer below, select all three of these layers, and use that Merge command. Now I've got the result that I want, where I've got cut out the shape, but I've left that white line in the middle. And once again, now I'd be okay to do whatever extra function I wanted, such as a drop shadow, and still have the kind of quality that I wanted. Now remember, normally, blend if sliders stay editable until you do that merge down, then it's not editable. So you want to make sure that it looks the way you want. Here, I can actually see that maybe I want to get a hair closer because I can see a little bit of the white. So in this case, since it's a little late for that, I do one last thing. 
way down at the bottom. You can't even see it out of my filming area. It's called Matting Defringe. And I'm just going to go in here and say let's take one pixel off and then we're good to go. So that's just a little added bonus that wasn't intended for here. But if that happens, if you've already made the blend of sliders permanent and you still have a little tiny fringe around the outside, matting defringe under the layer menu will do it for you. Now, some of you might be wondering why I didn't use a smart object in this case and make a mask. And honestly, I could have, I suppose. But realistically, the main purpose of a smart object is when you want to edit the settings. Whereas in here, I don't really want to go back to the white version for this particular situation. So that's why sometimes a, a command or a function like blend if is just a quicker result than a smart object. I still considered using a smart object just to see if I wanted that flexibility. In this case, it didn't, wasn't really necessary. Please make sure to check out my two websites, pscs6support.com for Photoshop CS6 users and learningphotoshop.cc for those of you on Photoshop CC. I'm Dave Cross. Thanks for watching.